This is a mint condition 14 year old iMac that I was given for free. And thanks to good old Timmy, it's pretty much obsolete. So in today's video, I'm gonna be opening it up, cleaning it out, giving it a few upgrades and installing Linux to see just how usable we can make this 14 year old iMac. Now, a little over a week ago, a family friend of ours reached out to me and asked if I would help her recover some data off of a really old hard drive. She knew the Mac was declining in age and wanted to get her family photos off before it crashed. So after helping her recover her data, she said I could keep it. And I love this thing. This is a 2011 27-inch iMac. And in my opinion, this is one of the best iMacs ever built. For reference, this is a 2011 iMac and this is a 2012. See, in one year, they made it so much harder to work on them. And it feels like the 2011 is just built so much better. So we're gonna be opening it up and cleaning it out and installing more RAM and an SSD. And then I'm gonna be installing Linux, which is an operating system that's really gonna bring this computer back to life. But before we do any of that, I'm gonna be booting it into Mac OS to see just what the experience is like before we do anything to it. Booting into Mac OS High Sierra, we can see that we're dealing with a 3.1 gigahertz Intel Core i5, four gigs of that rotated wham, and an AMD Radeon 6970M. Under storage, we can see the iMac's one terabyte mechanical oh. hard drive. Simply navigating around Mac OS was absolutely terrible. For crying out loud, Photo Booth took 13 seconds from the time I clicked it to the time it was ready to take a picture. 13 seconds! Loading something like the YouTube homepage could have been worse, but it was clearly struggling. Like, a lot. 1080p video playback was also pretty horrendous. Now I am recording using QuickTime on the iMac, but I was also basking in the glory of a whole 6 FPS in person. Yeah, this thing needs some help. Okay, so it runs a little warm and it's slower than Christmas, but it works, so we can work with that. Now this iMac is in mint condition. I mean, there's not a scratch on it. I mean, the ports don't even have dust in them, which makes me think that once we open it up, it's probably not even gonna be that dirty. And thanks to the generous amount of I.O. that Apple used to put on their computers, it really has everything it needs to be a good daily computer. Now when you first disassemble an iMac, the first thing you have to do is remove the glass screen protector. And up till 2012, they used magnets to hold it on, which makes it a lot easier than the adhesive that they introduced in 2012. Now usually what you do is take suction cups and you put them in the corners and you pull, but I don't have suction cups, so tape. After applying way too much tape, I was able to remove the glass screen protector. And after carefully removing the 11 pound display panel, we get our first look at the internals of this beautiful machine. However, ruining the view is the mechanical hard drive, so we'll start by removing that. Then after really, really carefully removing the RAM, I was able to start removing the screws that secure the logic board. After removing 1,369 screws, all different lengths of course, and 319 connectors, the logic board was free. After a quick thermal paste job to the CPU and GPU, I reinstalled the logic board back into the iMac. Now it may not look like it, but this whole process up until now was so complicated and my morale was low enough that I needed to make sure the thing still turned on. So I plugged everything in again and... Let's go! Nice. Now it goes without saying that if you're restoring almost any older PC, one of the most useful upgrades you can do is get rid of the older mechanical hard drive and replace it with a much faster, more reliable solid state drive. But there's a problem with this computer in particular. You see, this iMac was designed for a three and a half inch hard drive and so it has a bracket designed for a three and a half inch. But the average SSD is two and a half inches, which for my math nerds out there is a difference of one inch, which is like a lot. So I 3D printed this custom bracket that's designed to hold a two and a half inch SSD and slot perfectly where the three and a half inch hard drive used to go. So anyway, I'm gonna screw this SSD in and let's get it installed. After securing the SSD to the adapter, I installed it into the iMac. Ah, so much better. It kind of looks cool too. With the internal upgrades in place, I reinstalled the 11 pound LCD display panel. After a quick wipe down of the display, I reinstalled the glass screen protector. I got rid of the previous 8GB of RAM and installed a fresh 16. With it all put back together, I gave the iMac one final wipe down. 
Okay, so the hardware's done. So the only thing now is to install Linux. Now I'm gonna be installing a distribution of Linux called Ubuntu or Ubuntu. I don't know how you say it. And more specifically, I'm gonna be installing Ubuntu Cinnamon, which is supposed to somewhat replicate the feeling of Windows. Now I have Cinnamon installed on this USB thumb drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and we'll go ahead and start copying it over to the SSD. All right, we now have Ubuntu Cinnamon installed on this 2011 iMac. The installation process took maybe 10 minutes. It wasn't bad at all. And as you can see, we're currently on the desktop. And one thing that amazes me is everything is scaled correctly. By default, it understood exactly what the display resolution was. And I was at least expecting to have to input some sort of drivers for, you know, internet, Bluetooth, things like that. But it just did it automatically. I didn't have to touch a thing. Okay, right away, you can tell exactly where the inspiration for this came from, because it looks a lot like Windows. You have your start menu, and Linux default comes installed with a bunch of really cool and helpful applications. Like the LibreOffice suite is pretty cool. For example, you know, LibreOffice Writer is equivalent to Google Docs or Microsoft Word. Okay, let's load up some Firefox. <laughs> I love that by default, Timu is the second site. All right, let's just go to Google. That was pretty much instant. That was, that was pretty good. Let's go to YouTube. There's me. YouTube feels a lot more responsive on this thing than it did on Mac OS. I've cheated on my husband three times with a younger guy because of his weak tool. I thought it would just be a quickie, but my husband went wild on me for two straight hours. A little over two months ago, I made a video where I turned an older- That looks pretty good. Let's try 1440p. thing is there's actually a sticker on the top of this thing that's either I mean hey it's running YouTube at 1440p and Mac OS would have died if it tried that I mean wow this is very usable if you're using this for just general web browsing this would be perfect wow okay so I'm only using two gigs of RAM out of the 16 I have installed all right I'm gonna try an online game because I really want to see if it can handle it so I'm gonna load up some shell shockers okay so it's not great um, but it's it's definitely playable <laughs> You suck. Okay, I suck. Okay, well, I am playing, and it's actually not terrible. It's not great. Um, you can see there's some frame skipping. I'm, I'm willing to bet that you guys are seeing frame skipping that I'm not because I'm screen recording. Oh, that was bad. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really not that bad. It, it's playable. Yeah, I mean, this is incredible. It does everything you need it to do. It can do web browsing, video streaming. It can play games online, somewhat. I mean, if you have an older computer like this, it is absolutely worth putting in some upgrades and just installing Linux. Like, I'm kind of blown away by just how well this works. Everybody says Linux is great for older PCs, but like, this is something else. Well guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I wanna thank you so much for watching this, and if you've enjoyed it, please leave a like and consider subscribing. I really enjoyed this video, and I plan to make more just like it in the future. But until then, see ya.